Hello everyone, welcome to another Kinetic Tutoring episode. Um, today we're looking at the 2017 uh, AP practice problems. So let's get straight into the problem. This is going to be the first FRQ. So yeah. Um, the prompt reads, a spring of neg negligible mass and with a spring constant of 50 newton meters is hung vertically and is shown above the figure on the left. A block of mass one kilogram is attached to the spring and slowly lowered a distance x initial until it hangs at rest at the equilibrium position as shown above in the figure on the right. Um, the figure is not visible on my screen right here but I'll show you guys it in a moment. Here we go, here is the figure. All right, part A asks, on the dot below that represents the block, draw and label the forces that act on the block when it is in, at the equilibrium position. Each force must be represented by a distinct arrow starting on and pointing away from the dot. All right, so in this case, we have two forces acting on our block. We have our gravitational force going downwards and we have a spring force that has the same magnitude going upwards. Now it says calculate the distance x initial that the spring is stretched from the original length to the equi equilibrium position. All right, so the way we are going to solve this first, this part of the problem is using um, forces. So let's just draw out our system here we have a block and a spring here is our distance stretched x initial and the way we're going to do this is we know that the block is not accelerating upwards or downwards it says that it's at equilibrium meaning that the force of gravity and the force of the spring are counteracting each other here we can write our net force equation here we have the gravitational force on the spring and then or I mean on the block and then here we have the spring force and we know that spring force is simply the um, the spring constant times the displacement and here when we take a look at this um, we know that our acceleration is zero so mg is going to be equal to kx initial. The reason that we can just neglect this sign is because um, in this case I was talking about magnitude um, and since these forces are going in opposite directions you can set either one of them as positive or negative just one of them has to be positive and the other has to be a negative and so here we have mg we know that our gravity is around 10 our block is 1 so this side we have 10 our k is a value of 50 newton meters and we are searching for x initial and from here we can see that once we divide both sides by 50 we will get a x initial value of 0.2 and of course displacement is, is measured in meters so our answer will be 0.2 meters alright let's move on to the next parts okay now in this part it says uh, while the 1.0 kilogram block is in equilibrium a 0.2 kilogram ball of clay is launched with a speed V initial vertically from the ground one meter below the hanging block the clay has speed v1 v1 of five meters per second when it collides with the block calculate the speed v initial so guys basically it's saying that the ball is launched here when it gets to this point it has a speed of five meters per second and it's asking what speed the ball is going to have here and of course the way we're going to have to solve this is using um, projectile motion or kinematics this can also be used 
in solved using energy, but we're going to use kinematics in this case. Uh, let's just write out our three kinematics equations. We have V final equals V initial plus AT. Here we're missing two variables, so we're not going to be able to use this one. We have X final equals X initial plus VOT plus one half AT squared. Once again, missing multiple variables. But when we look at our final equation, V final squared equals V initial squared plus 2AD, we will see that we're only missing one variable. We know that our V final squared is simply 5 squared. And we're going to say that upwards is going to be up. So we get 25 is equal to V initial squared plus 2 AD keep in mind that the acceleration is downwards so it will be negative 10 so we'll have negative 20 times D and our distance is 1 meter and from here we're gonna add this 20 to the other side and we'll get that V initial is the square root of 45 and let me just take out my calculator really quickly so I can see what that is. That's going to be somewhere around 6.7. And we know that our unit for speed is obviously meters per second. Now, let's take a look at the, ne at the next part of the problem. It says, upon impact, the clay sticks to the 1.0 kilogram block. Calculate the speed of the block immediately after the collision. So, um, uh, so, let's take a look here. The, the way we're going to solve this problem is using linear momentum and the way that momentum works and we know that conservation of momentum is going to apply to this problem because momentum is always conserved unless there is an outside force acting on the collision which we know in this case there is not so we know that m initial v initial is going to be equal to m final v final we have our V initial, which is going to be V1, 5. And we have our M initial, which is just going to be the mass of the block, which is 0.2. Multiply these together, we get 1. Our final mass is 1.2 because it's going to be the mass of the ball plus the mass of the block because they are, they are stuck together. And from here, we can find our V final. It's going to be 5 sixths. So we're going to write that here 0.83. And now I know it's you can't really see it because it's covered by my camera. I'll move it right here. Calculate the kinetic energy lost in the collision. So from here, we're going to do 1 half M, M initial V initial squared minus 1 half M final V final squared. And this is going to give us the kinetic energy lost because this is the kinetic energy exactly before the collision and this is the kinetic energy exactly after the collision so we know that our m initial is 0.2 5 squared is going to be 25 minus 1 half 1.2 And then V final squared here is 0.83 squared. And 
So let's just do these calculations really quickly. 0.5 times 0.2 times 25 is going to give us 2.5 minus 0.5 times 1.2 times 0.83 squared is going to give you 0.413 and when you subtract 2. Point, when you take 2.5 and subtract 0.413 you get an answer of somewhere around 2.1 which is the kinetic energy lost in the collision and we know that when we're talking about energy the units always going to be joules all right let's move on to the third and final page this this part's asking us to determine the period of oscillation for the block clay spring system we know that the period of oscillation for a simple oscillating spring is going to be 2 pi root m over k we know that our m is 1.2 k is 50 square root of that times 6.28 let's do this calculation really quick we get somewhere around 0.97. We know that when we're talking about period, we're gonna have the unit seconds. And so that will be our answer for part three over here. And for these last two parts, the, the, it's greater than, less than, or equal to problems. So let's just take a look at these. When the oscillating block clay spring system reaches maximum speed after the collision, the spring be stretched from its original length by a distance greater than, less than, or equal to x initial. Remember that x initial is the length of the spring when it is in equilibrium and and uh, stretched by the mass that is hanging. And now, let's draw a diagram of both situations. Here we have the block and the spring. Here we have the block with the ball at the bottom and the spring. These are attached together. And so we know that when when it's at maximum speed, um, and we're talking about oscillations, when the speed is at a maximum, the displacement and ac acceleration are at zero, meaning that it will be at its equilibrium position. So basically we're comparing the two equilibrium positions of the two functions. And we know that when we attach more mass onto a sprint onto a system that is being held up by a spring, the spring is going to be stretched further. So that is why the answer is going to be greater than for part E. The the string is going to be stretched further in the equilibrium position. Now let's go to the final part. The collision is repeated using a rubble rubber ball with the same mass as a ball of clay. The rubber ball is launched vertically with the same speed v initial. The collision between the rubble, rubber ball and block is elastic. Will the speed of the block immediately after co colliding with the rubber, rubber ball be greater than, less than, or equal to the speed of the block you calculated in part D? Here all we're doing is mm, we're just comparing a elastic collision to an inelastic collision. We know that in an inelastic collision, kinetic energy is not conserved because in the previous equation, what we did was um, calculate how much kinetic energy was lost. However, in a perfectly elastic collision, like what we're talking about here, um, both momentum and kinetic energy are conserved. And since there is no kinetic energy being lost, that means that the block is going to be going faster and this makes sense logically as well when you think about it because there's not going to be a 
extra weight attached to the block to be slowing it down so it can accelerate faster and so for this reason it will be greater than that's all I have for you guys today hopefully this helped and make sure to tune in again for more kinetic tutoring episodes